Good afternoon, Black Power. My name is King Black, also known as Brother Bomani. Uh, before I get into my broadcast, I would like to give a very small introductory myself so you can know who I am. Uh, a lot of you guys already know who I am. You already know how long I've been rolling. But for those that don't know, let me give a small detailed introductory of myself and who I am. Again, my name is Brother Bomani. I am the current regional minister of defense for the Newark chapter of the New Black Panther Party under National Chairwoman Crystal Muhammad. I am a 12 year veteran who formerly served under former chairman Malik Zulu Shabazz and uh, also known as attorney Malik Zulu Shabazz. I started my journey with the New Black Panther Party as far back as 2008. I, I enlisted in 2008, November 21st, 21st to be specific. Um, I filled out my application and I knew that this is what I wanted to do. And when I first seen a brother in, in a uniform, as such as this one, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. And I saw that they were out in the community and I said, I like that, I, I like that. You know, the, I saw the red, black, and green patch. I, I was I just, I was so appalled when I first seen these brothers, these black men in these uniforms these sisters in these uniforms. I was I was very excited about this. I never seen anything like this in my life. And it really changed my life uh, drastically. And uh, you know, 12 years later, I'm still here. Um, like I said, I, I didn't start off with a rank. I started off as an officer, as like everybody else that comes into the formation of the organization. Uh, you know, we go through a 90 day probationary period uh, we have to go through the necessary trainings, uh, quote your five duties of a panther, uh, quote memor and memorize your uh, general orders. Uh, everything that uh, all panthers has to do when you join the new Black Panther Party. Uh, again, like I said, 12 years experience, countless maneuvers. Uh, it's been it's been a ride. I also been a political prisoner. Uh, that's another discussion but I can get into I'll give you some small information about it I wasn't trapped by the uh, FBI the Federal Bureau of Investigation back in 2014 um, I was a political prisoner I did uh, some time in the federal prison system because uh, I got caught up uh, and I got to take responsibility for what I did I slipped up uh, federal informant got me good you know what I'm saying uh, got me jammed up and I learned from my mistakes and I learned from my lessons. And uh, all I can say at this point, they can never ever get me like that ever again. Because I'm more, I, I'm, I think more intelligently now. Uh, I'm more wiser. I make better decisions. So um, as I move forward, man, I just want to do some good work, some great work, continue doing great work, you know. Um, patrolling the police. Uh, monitoring the police because that's what I do. I ex uh, my expertise, I monitor the police. Um, I've been on countless uh, police the pig maneuvers. Police the pigs. We police the police. So we can't police the police no more. But seriously, um, I want to talk about the new Black Panther Party. I want to talk about what to do when accosted by the police when you're stopped by the police i want to talk about a few things for my broadcast uh, like i said i just want to give you a little brief introduction of myself uh, so let's get started the new black panther party for self-defense was founded 31 years ago 31 years ago was 1989 the New Black Panther Party was founded in Dallas, Texas by two bold, courageous brothers by the names of Aaron Michaels and Michael McGee. I mean, when I say these brothers was bold, I mean, at, at that time, and, and, and note that, you know, at that time in 1989, this was like around the time when our elder and ancestor, Huey P. Newton, made his transition. So, you know, Huey P. Newton passed away in August 1989. Uh, the New Black Panther Party was founded, 
in 1989, so that was like the perfect timing, you know, because the Black Panther Party for self defense in 1966 that was founded on October 15th, 1966, was uh, completely dismantled by the U.S. government and um, destroyed, completely destroyed by uh, Cointel Pro. Cointel Pro uh, demolished the Black Panther Party for self defense, and uh, there was really like a hmm, 66, 76, 86, over a 20 year gap, you know, where the revolutionary, the revolutionary movement came to a complete halt. You had the Nation of Islam, uh, Mr. Farrakhan had the, uh, was building up the Nation of Islam uh, in the 80s, early 70s, and everything. But uh, as far as the Black Panther Party, there was no Black Panther Party until the new Black Panther Party came back on the scene, which was 1989. So let me get back into the details of when the new Black Panther Party was founded. So again, like the New Black Panther Party was founded in 1989 by the two brothers. They started off small, very small. Uh, they started off locally in Dallas, Texas. They started off by doing armed patrols in neighborhoods. Uh, see, we was fighting a serious epidemic of crack, cocaine, and other drug paraphernalia at that time. And we was uh, the war on drugs. There was an attack on black people and. The brothers, you know, they was trying to do their part in the community. So they was, you know, are doing armed maneuver patrols, legal armed maneuver patrols in uh, Dallas, Texas, uh, trying to get the drug dealers out of the communities because we understood that the drugs was destroying our communities, uh, genocide, you know, uh, committing, committing genocide on our people, and those brothers was not having that. It was not having that at all, and I really commend the brothers. And without them, it, there would be no me. There would be no uniform. Me in this uniform. I really appreciate what they did. You know, find, founding the New Black Panther Party in 1989. Uh, throughout the years, uh, like I said, they was uh, local. Uh, the New Black Panther Party wasn't a national organization at that time. The New Black Panther Party didn't become a national organization until 1998 when Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad was appointed national chair of the New Black Panther Party. Dr. Khalid Abdul, Abdul Muhammad, as you know, was um, a former national supreme captain of the Nation of Islam under Minister Louis Farrakhan. Uh, Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad served up until 1994 when he was suspended by Minister Louis Farrakhan at that time and um, again that's a whole nother conversation you know I'm just trying to give you some information on the New Black Panther Party and the history and how it all how this whole shit popped off so um, Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad became the national chair in 1998 him and attorney Malik Zulu Shabazz, uh, they came together and they made it happen. They started building chapters uh, throughout the nation of this uh, wicked ass country. And uh, chapters was just popping up, you know, and the white man, they didn't like that at all. I just want to be clear. They, when the New Black Panther Party came on the scene, the white man, they, they was, uh, they were very highly upset. <laughs> Because we, they gave him hell. The Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad did uh, countless lectures throughout the country. Uh, King College, one of his uh, famous uh, lectures, when he uh, was teaching and engaging the people about the Jewish history and what they were doing to our people, uh, etc. Uh, Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad was famous for. Million Youth March in 1999, 19, uh, I believe they tried to start it in 1998. I think they had one, I believe they had one in 1998, but definitely 1999 they had uh, the Million Youth March. Um, and you know, there's more to it than that. There's just so much history in the new Black Panther Party. I can keep going and going and going and going. Um, but my broadcast. My message, in fact, is about what to do when accosted and approached by law enforcement. 
Our people need to know what to do when engaged by the police because uh, here in this country, we obviously know being here for over 500 years, we uh, never received any justice whatsoever. And our people need to be empowered and educated on the various laws of the states and the federal laws as well. Firstly, let me state for the record, I am not an attorney at law. I do not study the law. I am not a lawyer. I do Again, I am not an attorney. I, I did not pass the bar and I do not study law. However, I do educate myself around very at, dur, during um, various aspects of the law, but I wouldn't say that I study law, but I do um, look at things for my own educational purposes and try to reach out to the people and to inform them of what I know regarding uh, the laws. So, let me get started. What to do when you are stopped by the police in the black community? Uh, black people, this is what you need to know when you're stopped by the police. A lot of brothers, unfortunately, do not know what to do when they're stopped by the police. And endless times we are get ourselves caught up in a quagmire and in a spider web that we cannot get out because we, again, we don't have any justice here in this country. We are slaves and, you know, we got to step our game up when, when it comes to knowing our stuff. And so we can, you know, shut these people down because we are, we're near the end of time. Um, we need to educate ourselves and get into these books seriously. So let me get started. What to do when accosted by the police. The first thing you want to do when you're stopped by the police, the first, very first thing you ask, are you free to leave? That's what you ask a police officer. When the police stop you on the street, the first thing you want to ask is ask them, are you free to leave? And if you are not free to leave, the police basically is detaining you. And he has to tell you that he's detaining you. You understand that? So if the police is detaining you, the police need reasonable suspicion to detain you. And that's under uh, case laws, United States Supreme Court case laws. One of the top case law uh, for reasonable suspicion is Terry versus Ohio. And um, reason, reasonable suspicion is based off uh, articulation by the police officer, simply uh, articulation by the police officer that you're engaged in criminal activity. Basically, what I'm saying is that the police cannot jump out the car and say, yo, 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 come here, let me see your ID. They can't do that. That is illegal. The police need reasonable suspicion of a crime that you are, yeah, reasonable suspicion of a crime that you are engaged in criminal activity. You know, it's just, it's just uh, simple as that. And again, you know, I can give you some examples of what reasonable suspicion is, so you have an idea what reasonable suspicion is. A reasonable sus suspicion is pretty much, let's say um, you're standing, let's say you're standing by a store, um, one one o'clock in the morning. Let's say you got all black on. Now you know one o'clock, one o'clock in them, you know. Normally, all stores are closed, businesses shut down, everybody in the motherfucking house. So, you're standing by a store and you got all black on. Let's say you got a face mask on. Let's say you got uh, a crowbar in your hand. So, you're standing by a store, you got a crowbar in your hand, uh, the gate's down, and the police officer drives by and see you standing there. That's reasonable suspicion to stop you. The police now have reasonable suspicion to stop you. Now, he does not have probable cause to arrest. Now, you have to distinguish the difference between reasonable suspicion and probable cause. Probable cause is not required to stop you. 
probable causes are required to arrest them. Black people fail to realize the difference between the two. Every time I hear people, I people say, say, oh, you know, he didn't have probable cause to stop me. No, the police don't need probable cause to stop me. They need reasonable suspicion to stop me. Probable cause is only required to arrest that individual. Okay, um, my notes real quick, bear with me. Oh, let me get into it. Let me get into this. So, let me be clear. Um, under United States Constitutional Amendment 5, you do know that you have the right to remain silent. You know, uh, you do not have to talk to the police under no circumstances whatsoever. Uh, you should not talk to the police under any circumstances, except if, are you free to leave? You know, if the police stop you, all you think you say is, are you free to leave? And anything else, anything else after that, you uh, request an attorney because that's your rights under the Fifth Amendment. You know what I'm saying? To be represented by counsel uh, and, to, and to not be interrogated. So you have the right to remain silent. I suggest and recommend that you exercise that right to the fullest. Uh, these pigs play a vicious game. Uh, they, they lie. They lie. <laughs> they lie. They, they, even if you don't say nothing, they still try to make up stuff and write your police reports. I know this by experience. So the best thing, so you know if you do say something, they always can take what you say and and turn it into something that you didn't say. So the best thing, option I can give you is to just be quiet. Shut your mouth. Shut up. Exercise your right to remain silent. That's the best thing you can do, brothers and sisters. So, um, identification. Do you have to give uh, identification to the police when, uh, when requested? If the police request identification when you stop. Uh, typically, no, you do not have to give identification. Only under circumstances when a motor vehicle stop is conducted, yes, you do have to provide your driver's license. But right now, at this point, I'm talking about um, a normal stop on the streets. Do you have to give your identification? No, you do not have to give your identification card to the police. Now, in the event that the police suspect you of a crime, you do have to give your ID. But a lot of these situations be going on in the black community, you know, they uh, honestly, to be honest with you, they don't be having reasonable suspicion there. You know, a lot of these cases where these brothers, uh, they stopped on the streets, man, at night, throughout the day, and, you know, It'd be, it'd be simple harassment, man. You know, they want us locked away, man. They want us all locked up. Mass incarceration is real, man. And I, I, I have to express that because this is a serious issue that we're facing, you know, with uh, the justice system. And we got to uh, get on our toes. So anyway, you do not have to give your ID to the police only when reasonable suspicion is suspected okay so don't do not allow the police to course you to give them an ID you do not have to give them an ID okay um, go back to some other notes so reasonable suspicion of a crime, we went over reasonable suspicion of a crime, uh, you know, back to, you know, standing by the store, the cops drive by, they see you, you're standing out there, you got all black on, looking like a, looking, looking crazy, and the police come to stop you, and, you know, they jump out their cars, they say, hey, you, come here, uh, let me see your ID, yeah, you have to provide your ID, you know, because... That's a reasonable suspicion under the totality of the circumstances. You're standing outside, all black, face mask on, with a crowbar in your hand. The cop believes that you're trying to break into the establishment. That's a reasonable suspicion to stop you. And what he's basically doing, he's detaining you and he's investigating all of the circumstances. 
he at the time does not have, he do not have, at that moment when he stops you, he do not have enough evidence to arrest you again. So, um, he may have it later once he investigates. But I just want to distinguish the difference between, uh, you know, probable cause and reasonable suspicion of a crime and, uh, you know, what to do when you stop by the police. Normally, again, normally, um, brothers just be minding their business and police, uh, the pigs abuse their power. Uh, they trying to get, they trying to get their coat up. They trying to round the brothers up. They trying to round them up, lock them up, put them. You know, this mass, like again, this mass incarceration is real. Uh, it's over seventy percent of black men and men of color uh, currently incarcerated at this present moment. Yes, yes, I said it. Here in the United States of America, supposedly the freest country in the whole world has the largest prison population. Did you know that the United States of America has 25% of the prison population in the whole world? 25% of the world's prison population. Think about that. Ponder on that for a second. This is supposed to be the home of the free, and you know the rest. But obviously, you know, common sense would tell you that it's not. So um, we we dealing with some serious issues of... Uh, Free the Panthers, man. Free all political prisoners. Uh, we just need to be free. It's, it's as simple as that. So, um, what you also need to know when you're stopped by the police and they try to illegally search you. Under the Fourth Amendment, remember, you, you we have constitutionally we're protected. We're supposed to be protected. Let me see that. By various constitutional amendments. Saying United States Constitution is the uh, supreme law of the land, and I hope you know that. So, let me go over the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. So, we have uh, Fourth Amendment, United States Constitution, uh, United States Constitution Amendment Four. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. And no warrant shall issue but upon a probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. So what does that mean? Let me explain what it means. So, Basically, what it's saying is that all citizens shall exercise free right to be secure in their persons, which means your persons, you know, uh, your houses, which means your home, your papers, you know what your papers mean, your documents, and all the things that you have in your house, uh, and effects, you know, that's just like effects, that's pretty much like tangible items. So... This was put into law by the Crackers back in uh, 1776, I believe, when they wrote the Constitution, I believe. Um, they did this for a particular reason, because uh, there was a lot of things going on at that time. Uh, they wanted to make sure that um, when they... All right. Because that's a whole nother conversation, you know, when the people came over here, the crackers came over here, and they founded the United States of America. Founded America? Founded America? Founded America? No, they did not find America. They did not find or found a motherfucking thing. The cracker came here to the United States and caused havoc, caused mass genocide here to the native peoples. There were already people here, living here in this country. The European cracker did not find anything. Let me repeat that. So let me be clear, the Native Americans was already here. They already resided here in North America. And the European cracker came here and killed them all. Killed them all off. So I just wanted to make that clear because uh, 
I know it sounded good, you know, made it seem like, you know, the white man came here, oh, I found America. No, no, sir, non cycle So, back to what I was saying, though. So, you know, these crackers implemented uh, various laws to put in place to safeguard white people. Originally, you know, I, I can say that that's what the laws were for, you know. I mean, I can't say, I can't even say originally because we are considered three-fifths of a human. We are really not considered uh, citizens. So, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's like a two-streak. You know, it's, this, thing, this thing is funny. That's why we don't get any justice in the courts. Because, you know, they don't even consider us as a full human being. They don't consider us as people. So, um, when the Constitution was written, it was really written for white people, for European descent. You know, uh, they consider us second class citizens. So, um, back to the Constitution, though. So, uh, you know, I already corrected that the. Uh, New Jersey State Constitution was written in 1776, not the United States Constitution. The United States Constitution, again, like I said, uh, in my footnotes, uh, previously was in 1787. So, let's get into the search warrant aspect of it. Search warrants. We've been through this countless times and times again where our people, these police is raiding our houses, they're running in our houses illegally, and they don't have the proper doc legal documentation to enter your home. What do you do when the police come knocking on your door, trying to force themselves inside your house with your family? What do you do? What do you ask for? You ask for the proper documentation, which is a search warrant. The search warrant has to be signed by a judge. It's certified, oath, signed by oath, you know? So you have to ask the police for those documents. Please, my people, please, I beg you. Under no circumstances allow the pigs to enter your house out a search warrant. The search warrant must have to be. To my understanding, I believe the time the search warrant is uh, listed on the search warrant. Uh, the city and state is uh, documented on the search warrant. The name of the judge, the name of the uh, affiant, which is the person that uh, filled out the information in the affidavit that established probable cause. The police need probable cause to come up in your house. Please know that, which is established by facts. The police need facts in the affidavit to present to a judge. And the judge has to find probable cause. We find very, we find many, I mean, I mean, uh, many instances where the police lie in these affidavits. They present them to a judge and the judge signs them. A lot of cases in our community where a lot of our people are thrown away in prison off, based off of lies. You know, you're hearing it now, a lot of cases of, uh, not necessarily uh, off of the search warrants, but just cases of brothers that were just given injustice, you know, that, that, that uh, served injustice. Brothers that spent 20 years, 25 years, 35 years in prison for a crime that they did not commit. I'm serious, man. These, these 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 people, these Europeans, are vicious. These crackers, these devils, this enemy is vicious. We have to stand up. We have to take a stand. We are the vanguard. The power is in the people. The power is in you, people. So my message is, you know, I'm I'm trying to explain things to do when you're stopped by the police because you need to know these things. It's very important. You can't
can't allow the police to go in your house. You just can't do it. Don't be scared. Don't fold under pressure. You know? When they try to say, oh, we gotta go get a search warrant, well, wait, don't, don't let them, don't let them motherfucking bastards, these no good bastards in your house until they get the warrant. Your car. They wanna search the trunk of your car. No paperwork. They have to have these paperwork. They can't search your trunk of your car. Tell them no, you cannot search your trunk of my car. You need a search warrant. Under no circumstances should a circumstances should you allow the police to search the trunk of your car or anything with it that's not in plain view. It doesn't matter if they say they smell weed in your car. They still gotta get a search warrant. You know? There are certain, certain certain circumstances where you know the police can actually step out, but they can only search the areas which are in plain view. They cannot search your glove uh, compartment, especially if it's locked. If it's locked, they can't get in there. They need a search warrant. Simple as that. You gotta get a search warrant. So that's that. Um, Yeah, so there was a time that uh, the New Jersey State Police, the New Jersey State Pigs, they were very not notorious for uh, stopping black people. Let me be clear again, black people on the New Jersey State Turnpike for protectual stops. They were stopping black people left after right for no reason other than being, being in black, being in your black skin, being a black man, being a black woman. And th these things was happening over, I say about like 15 years ago. It still, it still happens. They, you know, they don't talk about it, but it still happens. Racial profiling is real. All over the hells and snells of North America, they stopping black people. They gunning the staff. Are you prepared for when you're stopped by the police on the highways and byways in North America? Are you prepared mentally? Not just uh, speaking of weapons. You know, I'm talking about mentally. Are you educated? Do you have cameras? Do you have, we have cell phones and every cell phone has a camera. I know you have the camera. I recommend that you buy a body camera. I recommend that you live stream on your phone or Facebook. Any um, social media platform you can live stream. Facebook is one I know about. Live stream the account, the entire account. From the stop first again. I'm begging you, my people, please. Control the police, make sure they're not running out of bounds. Make sure they're not violating their rights. Make sure they are in the, uh, under the scope of why they stop you. Ask, and you have the right to ask them why they stop you. You have, you have that right. You can't just come up to your car and you know just be demanding, demanding. You have the right to ask questions. However, again, I suggest that you. Up, they try to ask you where you're coming from. It's none of your business. It's none of their business where you're coming from. You don't have to tell them where you're coming from. They, they do that. they trying to entice a situation. They're trying to provoke you. They usually say things. These wicked ass practices. These devils. They say things to try to provoke you. Keep your composure. Stay professional. Stay militant. Look at these bastards. Eye to eye. Don't put your face down. Look at them eye to eye. Do not play with these guys. But at the same time, you know, we, they have the upper hand, so you have to be professional. You have to be limited. So again, you know, uh, protect your family. Uh, get the things that you need. Like I said, I recommend everybody get a body camera. 
You can purchase them on Amazon. Amazon.com, they have these body cameras, man. I'm telling you, they're, they're, they're phenomenal, man. I have two I have two of them for myself. Two body cameras I purchased. Let me take them off so I can show you. One is a... Uh, one is a 32 gigabyte uh, body camera, which has a, a clip attached to it. So I can attach it to my purse and my belt. This one's a 64 gigabyte, which is a core, the core, the battery life is phenomenal. I purchased you a body camera. Document these police, please. Do it for, do it, do it, do it for your, uh, for your safety. I don't want to say do it for you. For the safety of your family, man. you might have to go to court. You might have to present evidence to a judge. You know when you're arrested by the state, you know the state has the burden. You know, you know of the crime that you are committing. You know, the state has the burden. You know, you have that burden. Until we uh, speak again, I am King Black. I look forward to do, doing a lot of broadcasts and uh, providing you information when I can. You know, it's kind of uh, kind of tired. You know, it work. sometimes you know, I'm kind of tired, but you know when I can, you know, I look forward to giving you guys information. You know, building. Uh, one of the reasons I choose not to do a live stream. That was a win. Not saying that I won't utilize the live if I'm pulled over by the police because that would sound very really critical. I just told you that, and I will utilize. Of course, I will definitely utilize the live if I'm stopped by the police. But as far as this right here, you know, last thing I need is my my live broadcast to just. Just shut off, you know, these, these Facebook is so uh, wicked, these crackers, well, Mark Zuckerberg is, is a wicked cracker. You know, they, they are definitely against us, They're definitely against the revolutionary black power movement, so. Until we get, uh, until we uh, talk again, until we meet again, black power, hotel, peace, see y'all later. I come through by myself, I say it again, I'm a soldier, Black Panther Party, yes, we the brigade ass motherfucking brothers. We the vanguard, come through, yeah, I ain't saying we God, but peace, God.